Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm just going to update for you guys on everything that's happening with this system, um, which actually is the beginning of your nor'easter that's going to be impacting um, very quickly. We have some major uh, changes. A lot has changed last night with the snowfall totals and the wind gusts. So we have um, a very detailed... Uh, update for you guys, but we are really going to be looking at those changes and why they happened. So um, we're gonna, I'm gonna try and get the most information in for you guys, and we'll uh, start the video. So you can see that what we're looking at is basically all these thunderstorms that have been firing across the southeast this morning and last night. These haven't been too damaging. Um, pretty strong though. You know, I I don't think we've seen any supercells. But, um, they're definitely out there, and they're definitely, um, you know, they're organized storms. And then you have the snow. This is, like, the snow line that's been forming. This has been snowing from all the way from Minnesota down into parts of North Carolina and Virginia. So, um, you think that because the system is going to head into the northeast that this is all going to hit like the coastal areas of the northeast well no because this is actually going to detach from this uh main system here so this main system is going to be by itself as all rain dipping into parts of northern florida and it's going to ride up the coast but one like point where we should stop it when we look at the um H triple R for the northeast, or it might be the FE three. The low pressure is going to be parallel to the border of North Carolina and Virginia. That's a good uh, stopping point to just look at, you know, where it is, when that timing is going to be, and all that. So that's pretty much all that's been happening. We're also going to be looking at this uh, at atmospheric river. Um, that's going to be impacting the western coast, mainly California, but uh, it's going to be pretty strong. I think it's going to be a slightly weaker than the one that we had a few months ago. So, we're going to move on to our alerts. And as you can see, that what you've got going on is a lot of, you know, alerts in the northeast, in the north central and in California. So, we're going to start off in California with your winter storm warning for all these mountain ranges and upper elevations uh, of California and then pretty much all those towns and cities around it. I think more towns around the mountains would be included in this. Then you've got a flood watch. Now, that flood watch goes out for a lot of California. I guess you could say all of Central California. But, I mean, it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a ton of rainfall. I, it's There's no doubt about that. So, we're really going to watch that very closely. Um, and, yeah, I mean, there are a few counties. There's two counties in um, Nevada that have, uh, that are under flood warnings. And then I think there's one, two, and maybe even three counties in California that are under flood warnings. But... Uh, that the, the flood warnings really mean that it's life threatening. It's it's really terrible. But you know that is that's pretty much that. And then for the north central, um, we have winter storm warnings that go out for all of northern um, Minnesota, and then you have some blizzard warnings out for you guys too. But that would be for northwest Minnesota, and then north North Dakota. It would be mostly the eastern half of the state under these winter uh, warnings and watches. Winter weather advisory for almost the whole state. And then for all of north, what, northeastern North, uh, north Dakota, you guys are under a blizzard warning as well. Um, and then Wisconsin, it would be a little area here stretching from northwestern uh, Wisconsin down into parts of central and eastern Wisconsin. So, that's it for your north central alerts. Northeast, we already have some winter storm watches out. So, you know, this is pretty early because the storm isn't supposed to arrive until late tomorrow night. So, you know, we still have, I think we still have a few hours left. 
well, not even hours. We still have a day or, you know, a day and a half left or something. But you do have a huge area under a winter storm watch. This goes out for almost all of Massachusetts, a lot of Connecticut, mostly northern Connecticut, a lot of New York State, um, a lot of the southern half of Vermont, New Hampshire, and then a lot of southern Maine. So that's the whole area under uh, this risk. Not yet Cape Cod. I think you guys will definitely get at least this winter storm watch um, just because that you're going to get a few inches of snow, but you're also going to have those wind gusts gusting past 70 miles an hour. So, you know, those are all your alerts. And we're going to now look at the uh, HRRR. This is for the southeast. And we're just going to break down this uh, whole thunderstorm event. It's not a severe thunderstorm event, but it is a thunderstorm event. So I guess you could call it a thunderstorm outbreak, not a severe thunderstorm outbreak. But, I mean, if you get what I mean. Um, so this is this was 7 a.m. this morning. Right now it's actually 8 o'clock, I think. Just after 8, 8, 11 Eastern Time. So this was 7 uh, a.m. And it had storms not yet showing any form of a line here. But, I mean, 8 a.m. this morning, you finally do see a line start to show. So right around now is when the gusty winds are going to really pick up. And they're going to diminish very quickly. So there may be a you know, 10 to 20 minute period or maybe half an hour of winds that could gust over 50 miles an hour. It's not terrible, but that is damaging. So you you want to watch out for that. But then it's going to be just a ranked storm for the Car Carolinas and the southeastern coast. So, you know, just a little soaking storm. And then northern Florida, you guys will also get some storms as well. So, for northern Florida, you guys would probably get hit the hardest around 7 p.m. tonight. So, watch out for the evening hours. And then, um, for uh, Mississippi and Alabama, you guys would probably be 7 a.m. So, it's like a 10-hour, 12-hour difference. Um, so, I was also want to tell you guys that... I mean, you probably you obviously know already, but we are in daylight savings now. So, basically what that means, if you don't already know, is that we get, uh, we lose, like, an hour of sleep, and then we get an hour of daylight. So, what does that mean? The days are going to be a lot longer. So, it's going to get dark probably by, it's probably going to get dark around 6.30 today. I don't know, 6.30. Uh, in the evening, and then as we get into the spring and then the summer, we're going to see this trend get even farther until it's going to not get dark until like 8.30 at night. So, you know, it's going to get pretty crazy, but um, I think it's going to be nice because, you know, it's been, I feel like it's been winter for so long um, that we kind of need the warmth now, but that does also mean severe storms are more likely in the uh, later hours of the day because the sun is still up so um, just something to consider watching because usually when these kind of systems uh, run through usually they're not even you know they're not even thunderstorms when they get to uh, Florida but they're still going to be pretty strong um, and they're get even when they get to Florida and when it's going to be 7 p.m. so you know, just something to tell you guys and something to consider looking at. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the HRRR in the southeast. We're going to briefly look at the Storm Prediction Center, what they've got to tell us for today's summary. So for the southeast, I mean, this is the same area we talked about. This is southern Mississippi and Alabama, southern Georgia and northern Florida. Um, only up to a slight risk. I think if it was an enhanced risk... <laughs> It would probably be a little bit earlier, so like a day before this system hit. Um, but all you're getting is a slight risk, tornado risk, up to 5%, mainly for this Donathan area. So Donathan, Alabama, any area surrounding that, even if you're in a different state than where Donathan is, you can still consider yourself in this 5% risk as long as you're 
um, not too, too far away. Um, the wind threat, like I said, the um, when, th when that line forms, it's going to be quick, and it's going to form right in this area. So that th there's your 15% risk of wind speed uh, 50 greater um, than 50 knots or higher within 25 miles of the point. And then hail risk is also 15. So, you know, it's a, it, like I said, it's a pretty organized system. It's just not, it's just not strong enough and it's uh, not, you know, long, long enough because some of these systems can last for days. This one will last for like five hours or something. So maybe a little spring thunderstorm warm up here for the southeast. Um, and then tomorrow's outlook, um, not much, just a marginal risk for Fort Myers, uh, Cape Coral, Florida, Gainesville, Florida, and Orlando. Uh, you also have Tampa and St. Petersburg. Tornado risk, there's no tornado risk. Wind, 5% risk. I want to be too worried. Maybe you'll hear rumble of thunder, maybe a flash of lightning, but that is at most. Hail, it's still hanging on to a 5% risk, so wind and hail are kind of closely together with this, but you know, nothing to be concerned about because the th day three risk there is absolutely nothing. So we're going to head on to the atmospheric river here in the uh, western U.S., so we're going to break this down hour by, well not hour by hour, but you know, kind of close to that. So this was 9, this was 9 p.m. last night, and you're starting to have some snow move into the upper elevations and the areas around uh, that, that area. So it's going to be moderate to heavy snow for pretty much the entirety of, of the event. But, you know, at first you're saying, oh, it doesn't look too bad. But then watch as this grows and gets stronger. And then the northwestern coast of California is going to get a ton of rainfall. Um, and the, but this, but the problem is, is that this continues for days and doesn't weaken. It, it's gonna, it's gonna stay for so long that this low pressure system isn't even heading south. I mean, this is what all of the atmospheric rivers did. They would be very slow moving, very large, and then they very slowly move south and then form a different system for the eastern U.S. That's Every single uh, round of, or wave of the atmospheric river would do that, but this one is actually heading north. So that's just gonna that just means that you're gonna have even more snow and rain. Um, but look at this. This is extreme heavy snow and very heavy rain. Uh, 10 p.m. tonight. So it looks like tonight, uh, that maybe the evening hours, into the overnight hours of tonight is where you're gonna have the heaviest rain for central california the heaviest rain is probably going to be two three maybe four p.m today and then we'll skip ahead to tomorrow uh look at all this this huge band of rain that's going to move through oregon and washington state this is hammering washington state they're getting bulldozed out there um but look at this extreme rainfall from like uh, Oregon down into parts of Northern California. I'm not counting uh, Washington State in this for you because for you guys it'd actually be from heavy snow. So you know it's something to watch. Seattle, you guys are definitely gonna get at least an inch out of this, I think. Um, but then this continues, and now you got very heavy snow in the upper elevations and the area surrounding in Southern Oregon. But um. I think the area is getting hit the hardest. It's going to be South Central to Southern Oregon and Northern California. Um, but this will continue. And this is, you're already at like Tuesday. And it's still raining and snowing very hard here in Central California and in uh, Idaho and parts of Montana. So it's going to be a very long event. But um, that's it. That's as far out as the MV3 can go. So in the next update, I think I'll probably give you guys the latest on the uh, atmospheric river, but um, if not, we'll just be focusing on the uh, nor'easter. So we're gonna move on now to the excessive rainfall outlook. So we're gonna go day by day. 
So for today, you're up to a slight risk. So this is at least 15% risk. We'll zoom in here so we can get some cities. Sacramento, California, you guys are in this risk. Uh, Santa Rosa, Redding, and yeah. So there's a lot of parks out here. There's a lot of forests. Um, but, you know, it's Eureka, you know, all the coastal regions and all the coastal cities. Um, at least it's not a, at least it's not, you know, a moderate risk. That is, if you see a moderate risk, that is not good. You don't want any major cities or towns, uh, you know, or just areas in general that are included in that risk. That would be not good. So, you know, today shouldn't be too bad. But tomorrow, though, is going to be very bad. Tomorrow, you do see a very large area for a moderate risk. So this is at least 40%. This goes out for Redding. Uh, I think I would include Chico. I don't know if the National Weather Service would or the um, Weather Prediction Center. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look at all these mountain ranges in this risk. And all, all these uh, forests and parks, you know. It's it's a very densely, um, you know, forested area, a lot of trees out here, but, you know, I mean, there is a lot of people under this risk. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think we have any really major cities to point out, because that's the farthest we can zoom in, so, um, just kind of pause the video and take a look at the map, just to see if you're included in this moderate risk so that was the day two risk so so we're going to so this was for um tomorrow so this was for monday now we're going to go to tuesday so this is for tuesday's outlook because i think the day one or okay so the day one they're actually counting today through monday so this is the day one is today's risk through monday's risk a day two is Monday's risk to Tuesday risk, but the um, but for the day two risk, the uh, portion of Monday that they're counting is gonna be late Monday, so not all of Monday, but uh, most of Tuesday, and then the day three risk is late Tuesday into Wednesday. So this could be the worst of it. Uh, but there is the Sierra Mountains. This is like, you guys are cut in half. Um, but there's like a whole line here of mountain ranges. Um, but it's all west of the mountain ranges. That's where they're going to have the worst impacts. So, um, Fresno, California. You guys are pretty much on the line here. Uh, is, is, is Leah? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I think I am. Um, you guys are all on the borderline. I would include, personally, I would include Fresno. I would include Sacramento. Um, but, you know, Northern California, I would say you guys, like, all these areas in here that are under this, um, marginal risk and this slight risk, I really think I would bump you guys up to at least a, uh, slight risk for the whole area and then, you know, moderate risk for some people. But... You know, it's just a lot of mountain ranges that are included in this risk. But then look here. You've got another area in deep south California that are that's under this. Santa Maria, um, San Luis Obispo County, Santa Barbara, uh, Lompoc. So you can see that Santa Clara too. But you can see that the whole area in this more southern risk is a lot more populated so the farther south we go the more major cities and towns we run into um but something to look at but los angeles is, los angeles is not too far away um from this moderate risk so if they were to expand it uh the weather prediction center i would say you guys in los angeles would be on the line maybe even the northern metro area of Los Angeles could be included, but, you know, this is very, this is very close to some major cities. Um, we're going to now move on to, looks like this is the um, latest information on the 
uh, you know, the upcoming Nor'easter. So, as you know, we have many uh, changes that happened last night. I told you guys in the beginning of the update. But we are going to be looking at these uh, changes. We're going to be figuring out why they happened and, you know, what the outcome is going to be. So, we have about a day, maybe half a day, to still have some uh, moderate changes in this forecast. So, if we were to have that, I think it's going to go back to very heavy snow for the more southern area included in the system. But let's get to the GFS. So this is the latest GFS. This is the 6Z. So if you if, if any of you want to check this out, this is the 6Z GFS. You could it's very easy. Just go to Tropical Tidbits. Um, um, but this is 2 p.m. Uh, looks like this is tomorrow. So this is the afternoon hours of tomorrow. You're starting out as all rain for New York City, New Jersey, and then some light snow for mostly of mostly all of uh Pennsylvania and then a lot of southern New York state but then there's going to be a lot of rain so it's going to be back and forth snow and rain to get started this is not going to be an organized system as we get started um but we're going to stop here because like i said that uh you know that good stopping point here's your low pressure and it's m more or less uh, you know, parallel to the um, border of North Carolina and Virginia. So we're going to stop here and just kind of look at, take a moment and just look at everything. So right now we're at 8 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. So this is Monday night and you've been dealing with some heavy, not heavy snow, but light to moderate snow. For western Pennsylvania and central to south central and north central New York State. Now, anywhere around that area, like the, all those areas I just announced, it's going to be all rain so far. This is at 42 hours. But watch as this gets into the northeast and starts intensifying and you know, organizes. It's still only a 991 millibar low pressure. But you're already dealing with some very heavy snow for southern New York State, northern New Jersey. I mean, this is very close to New York City. I mean, I would, I mean it would be very close if, if this tweaked a little bit. Like, if the direction of the system or the path of this jet stream tweaked a little bit, I would say New York City could really have an all-out winter storm at least five inches. But I don't think we're going to be seeing that. Because, you know, it's been back and forth. Yesterday was complete back and forth between, like, New York City getting a ra one round of moderate snowfall late and then uh, getting, like, three inches to uh, the almost the entire system bringing New York City very heavy snow and giving them up to ten inches. It has been back and forth between that. But now it's already down to if New York City is going to get any snow or not. So, I mean, this is the middle of the night, and it is have, it's, it's raining very hard um, in New York City, mostly western New York City, and then it's snowing very hard in southern New York State. And then now this heavy snow enters parts of western Massachusetts, northern, uh, northern Connecticut, and then all of New York State. New York City is still not getting any snow. This finally makes it to Boston. Comes in as some heavy snow. Uh, same thing for you guys in Rhode Island and um, Connecticut. Um, but it's still going to be very heavy snow by 8 p.m. Tuesday night. I think Tuesday night is where you're going to have the worst impacts. This uh, low pressure is just going right, to be right off the coast of Cape Cod. And it is going to be very heavy rain and snow for Cape Cod, like back and forth. Boston getting an all-out snowstorm. Uh, New York City and Long Island getting a bit of snow, maybe like a few flurries out there. I don't know, but it's going to be very light snow. Um, if we were to if we were to take the information that we have as our final guess and forecast on the system, uh, it would be. New York City and the Long Island area getting like, you know, just some flurries and light snow showers. But 
you know, it is not, it definitely changed, and there's going to be a lot more snow farther north than farther south, um, but this is the middle of the night, Wednesday uh, morning, or 2 a.m. Wednesday morning, I think, I think this would be, yeah, this would be Wednesday morning, and it's still snowing in Boston, still snowing in Rhode Island, still snowing in Massachusetts, then this finally pulls out in the morning hours of Wednesday, but man, is it going to be a long system, and it's going to be a very sharp cutoff, so, um, I think the cutoff is, if we, again, if we had to take a guess, uh, right now, the cutoff would probably be, like, just north of Long Island, and north New Jersey, I think northern New Jersey, you guys could get a lot of snow from this, up to a foot, I know you're saying, like, why, then why are you telling me that New York City's not going to get anything? Oh, it's just because of the Long Island Sound. You know, I know northern New Jersey is still a coastal area, but they're not too close to the Long Island Sound. They're still um, hidden from the Sound because of New, New York City and parts of New York State. Um, but it's all this warm, all these warm waters that still haven't gotten too, they, they haven't gotten cold enough yet. If these waters were cold enough, like if it, we, if we were in the middle of an Arctic front and then this storm came out of nowhere, like in the middle of this, oh, you'd have like feet of snow piling up in New York City and Long Island. But because these, wa these waters are so warm, it's, preventing that snowfall to come down and I'm not I know you're also saying you could have some uh, ocean effects now I don't think that's the case with nor'easters nor'easters it's usually a uh, you know a very strong fast moving or fast moving or s slow moving system and it's hit or miss and that's usually that's looking like it's going to be the case for this system so, yeah, that was the latest GFS. That was the 6Z um, GFS. And we're going to move on now to the Euro. So we're kind of comparing the two models for this system. The Euro is different. The Euro is a bit different. It wants more frozen precipitation farther south. We've been seeing this trend for the last day or two. And it hasn't really changed. Um, but this is late Monday. And then you're getting into early morning hours of Tuesday. And uh, you're get, you're starting out as all rain for pretty much all these major cities, unless you're in New York State or Northern Pennsylvania. Um, but then watch as it quickly intensifies, like early morning hours of Tuesday into the afternoon hours. Heavy sleet, and very heavy snow for New York City, uh, New Jersey, and mostly Northern New Jersey. But I mean, this is the European model showing very heavy snow for New York City. Long Island, excuse me, and then northern New Jersey. Boston, maybe, could get a lot. If we were to take the information based on the European model, Boston would get a lot of snow from this system, like two or three feet. Um, but if we were to take what the European is showing and not looking at the snowfall totals, I would say, you know, you would probably guess, like, up to five inches for Long Island. But the snowfall totals are very different. They're probably going to surprise you. Um, but, I mean, this is, like, midday Tuesday. Uh, the low-pressure system is, like, right on Cape Cod. Um, that is very close. But it's going to be, the winds are going to be whipping out there. And it is very heavy. It's going to snow a lot for... Um, the coast of Massachusetts, you guys are going to get hammered, but you're not, it's still early morning hours of Wednesday, it's still not completely cleared up until, like, afternoon hours of Wednesday. So, this is, the duration of the system is probably going to take, like, uh, how many hours out is this? This is, like, nine, this is, like, 85 hours out, and it's still not completely over, so... It's probably going to take 90 hours from now to get over with this system. But then look at this huge uh, climb in the jet stream here. This warm front has really, I think, given up on the northeast. 
and we're having a pattern change. So, I think what we're going to be looking at now is we used to be having this, uh, like the climb in this warm front for the northeast. Now we're going to see that climb in the warm front for the north central. So now it's your turn, got is now it's their turn to get uh above average temperatures. But then this soon we'll actually move into the western half of. Uh, the state, so that, or sorry, the western half of the country, so that that would impact, you know, California. I think that would really lower the, uh, the, um, the snowfall risk, but I think that would really, you know, elevate the rainfall risk, um, but then that would again impact nor the northeast, and then when this, uh, when this, when this, like, front, this warm front, makes it back into the northeast, I think that is going to be the start of spring. That is going to be uh, when the when spring, you know, when all of a sudden spring just seems to begin. So, we're going to now look at the, we're going to be comparing the GFS and the European for basically the snowfall totals. So, this goes out like 90 hours, and the European doesn't want to show too much snow. I mean, it's very interesting to see. If I were to put this at nine, at the nines, what is this? The um, eight, this is the OZ, I think. This goes out two forty hours. I mean, let me get the latest. Hold on, guys. I just want to get the latest European model run that goes out two forty hours. If I were to guess, it would probably be the 918. Okay, so it's the 10. This is the 10Z. So, the latest Euro that goes out 240 hours has not changed. I mean, it's very interesting. This is very close. I mean, it's kind of annoying. It's a pain in the back because... What we've been seeing all day is changes back and forth between Long Island and New York City. The latest European model that goes out 240 hours says New York City and Long Island, you guys could expect up to a foot. Don't go out and say to your neighbors, friends, and family that, you know, you're getting a foot of snow if you're on Long Island or New York City. That is not true. We don't know that yet. But we have to get there. We have to get to tomorrow to really figure out. Okay, you gotta get. You gotta give us the like final information on this system. We can't have any uh, any more back and forth changes. But if we were to take the latest Euro, the latest European model, uh, you know, the latest info, it would probably. Give Long Island at least seven inches of snow. Eastern Long Island is supposed to get seven inches of snow according to the latest European model. But again, don't say this is not a forecast. This is just an update. We're we're this is just an update on the model runs. Um, it wants Boston to get a little bit less snow than I expected. It wants Boston to get around eleven inches, twenty seven for central, uh, around twenty seven inches for central Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts, 19. Um, looks like Connecticut, 17. Rhode Island, 16. Uh, New York State's kind of here and there. You're getting snowfall totals of over 2 feet of snow, mainly for the southern half of the state. Um, but look at this. I mean, this is an area right on the border of uh, Lake Ontario, Ontario. I think I'm not sure what like this is. Um, but 30 inches, so almost 3 feet of snow. Same thing for you guys in northern New Jersey and north northeastern Pennsylvania. So anywhere you see this light blue, the shade of light blue, and maybe a tint of purple showing up, that is snowfall totals approaching 3 feet, maybe even getting higher. So that is pretty interesting to see. And then this uh, band of very heavy snowfall snakes its way down into... Parts of uh, West Virginia, and now you guys are included in this uh, area of snowfall. Over, snowfall totals over a foot. Um, 
But South Central New Jersey, I would say you guys could definitely get four inches based on the uh, latest Euro. Um, the highest uncertainty is definitely for Long Island and New York City. I think everywhere else we get, have a good understanding. It's just if we should include them, if we sh if we should include them in the, you know, talking about a foot of snow or just say. No, your guys, it's too warm. But I mean, this is the this is the latest zero that goes out two forty, two hundred forty hours, and it wants to say, Southern Connecticut and Northern Long Island could get fourteen inches of snow. I think that might be a bit of an exaggeration. Because now we're gonna look at the GFS. Now the GFS is something a little different to say about this. The GFS is very weird. It still wants to agree with the Euro on 17 inches for Boston, 20 inches for Central Mass, and then Western Massachusetts could get 23 inches. But it wants New York City to get almost nothing, almost no snow. And then same for Northern New Jersey, and same for most of Pennsylvania. It really wants to talk a lot less snow and a lot more snow farther north. 16 inches here for New Hampshire. Um, this is 10 inches, and then when you get a little bit farther south into southern New York State, you're going to see more of, like, you know, 25 inches. But it wants a very weird area of Long Island. This is, like, it wants to cut through central Long Island and out of the blue just give you guys an extra 2 or 3 inches but then exclude all of Long Island and New York City from the system. It's very difficult when you have two models saying, saying like, the exact different thing. Like, you know, no snow from the G according to the GFS for Long Island and New York City, but then, like, a foot or more for Long Island and New York City from according to the Euro. So, something to watch very closely. But they still are definitely agreeing on this uh, this band of snow that's going to move through West Virginia. You guys in West Virginia, you guys are all set. I think this is your final forecast for you guys because nothing has been changing for you. It's been pretty much straightforward. You're getting a foot of snow just in that area. So we're going to now move on to the wind gusts. So the wind gusts have definitely changed. This is the max wind gust forecast. The GFS doesn't provide that, but the Euro does. Um, and again, this is like the latest Euro that goes out 240 hours. Um, but we're going to put this at the, you know, the worst part of the system. I mean, this has, this the, the, the strongest winds have shifted north. Now it's looking like it could be northern... Uh, northeastern the northeast coast of massachusetts getting those wind speed those wind gusts over 70 miles an hour so the max wind in knots is going to be 71.7 miles an hour looks like right here on this coastal area of massachusetts cape cod you guys are going to be slightly gusting below 65 miles an hour now let's shift to long island and you know uh, Rhode Island and Connecticut, this whole area. Now, you guys are probably going to be gusting to 60 miles an hour. Um, this is very weird. I think Long Island is definitely going to be gusting to a higher amount, but I think eastern Long Island is going to get more. I mean, 62 miles an hour here for so southeastern Long Island, um, and then out here in Montauk, 51. I think that's a little bit less... They're like, you know, underestimating Matt. Um, but it wants to show New York City and Northwestern Long Island gusting to 60 miles an hour. I don't, I think it's possible, but I don't think it's likely. I think it's definitely possible. It could definitely happen. But if I were to guess, I would say that you would probably get gusts to like 55 at most. So yeah, that it's pretty much this whole area. It's gusting between upper 40s to mid 50s and then if you're closer to the coastline uh to 60s and potentially 70s 
So that's pretty much it for your max wind gust, and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you guys the um, this is the winter winter storm severity index. So we do have some extreme impacts here that are out for um, a lot of northwestern Connecticut and southern New York State. So this means expect substantial disruptions to daily life, extremely dangerous or impossible driving conditions. Travel is not advised. Extensive and widespread closures and disruptions to infraction may occur. Life-saving actions may be needed. So this means you want to stop you want to make sure you are ready today, get all your supplies ready. Um let me zoom in so I can get any major cities. So I can tell you guys. So Litchfield, Connecticut. You guys make sure that you're going to the supermarket today to get all your supplies ready. Pick up, get a flashlight, a, a first aid kit, you know, because it's going to be, it's going to be very cold and it's going to snow for a very long time and it's going to be very windy. Massachusetts, um, not Springfield, but Pittsfield. Massachusetts, that would be for you guys. Definitely get ready. Tomorrow's going to be a pretty bad one. And then major impacts. This would be expect considerable disruptions of daily life. Dangerous or impossible driving conditions. Avoid travel if possible. Widespread closures and disruptions to infraction may occur. That would be for Albany, uh, Concord, um, Concord, uh, Concord. I think that's Concord, New Hampshire. And then, you know, all this area here in western to, well, not western, but eastern uh, New York State. So, I think that's going to wrap the video, guys. But thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already liked, share, comment, subscribe, if not subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you guys in the next update. But today, we are really going to be looking at uh, these changes in the forecast for the system and who's going to get the most snow. Maybe even it'll get down to who's getting snow and who won't. So we'll see you guys.